See, this is to be the motivation for our self-denial, getting to know Jesus. It is for Him alone. Hello, welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. Now, before we begin this episode, I do want to take a moment to say a very heartfelt thank you to Avenger Claps for suggesting our current topic, and to let you know that if you have a topic you'd like me to chat about, well, let us know. Let me know in the comments section. Your suggestion may be our very next topic. Thank you for doing so. So. This is a very interesting topic, you know, denying ourselves and picking up our cross. And I must confess that at first, I found this to be just a little bit overwhelming. I mean, this topic covers so much ground. Yet, it is a very, very important teaching from Jesus. But... Where exactly should I begin, is what I was puzzling over. Well, as I was thinking about this, I began to reflect on the purpose of this podcast, which is to look at everything through the lens of what it means to be a Christian, which is to be in a relationship with Jesus while learning from Jesus and then while enacting everything we have learned. And it was then that I remembered that Jesus said that every teaching and every command in the Bible is based on the two greatest commands ever given, which are to love, to love God with our entire being is the first one, and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves is the second one. And because of this, well, I have found that Jesus is telling us to deny ourselves and pick up our cross to follow him is based on love. Well, it even fleshes out what this love means, does it not? Now, you may be asking, denying ourselves is based on love? Yes. Why, yes, it is. In a previous episode, one entitled, uh, What is Love? Or was it Love is What? Anyway, I'll link to it up above somewhere. We discussed how our love for God involves the spending of ourselves, the giving of ourselves for others. So, if the context of the passages where we are taught this involves spending ourselves for another person, then it makes sense that we could see this as being so, right? I mean, if the context of the passage doesn't allow for this, then no matter how much it might appeal to us, we really cannot say that it suggests this is for love. Well, The passages which teach us this are in Matthew 16, in Mark 8, and Luke 9, and I will list all the scripture references in the description area so you can check them out on your own. But this idea not only fits the context of these passages, these passages also tell us that it is explicitly with with Jesus that this is done. It is for Jesus himself that we are giving of ourselves. Jesus is the one who ties together the teaching to these very next words. He says, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses it for him, no, he says for me, for Jesus himself, will save it. See, denying of ourselves for Jesus is what this is about. And what is this but the giving of ourselves for another? Here the other person is Jesus. 
See, this is to be the motivation for our self-denial, getting to know Jesus. It is for Him alone. And without it being for Him? Well, it makes no sense to do this, to be quite honest with you. Indeed, Paul even references this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the chapter on love, when he says that even if he were to surrender his body to be burned, but had no love behind it, it would be for nothing. I know. So, this is expressly for the purpose of getting to know God, of loving God, and thereby allowing His love to touch others. Well, and, and, and there's something else that I noticed while I was looking into this. See, the way that all these passages read, self-denial and picking up of our cross are two different things. I mean, they're intrinsically linked. Do not get me wrong, they go bet in hand in hand better than a hand in glove. Self-denial begins with repentance, which, as we've seen before, is the choice to say no to self-centered ways, right? It is the choice to turn back around, face God, and walk towards God. And yet, it goes much further than this, for it is also the refusal to ever get spun back around to walk away from God. Now, picking up our cross is the next step. It is the doing of what is needed to end selfless selfishness permanently. Now, 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 before I get accused of saying that huh, we can do this all on our own, that we can save ourselves by doing this, or any such thing. And I've been accused of such things before. I'm hoping to avoid that here, because that is not what I am saying, right? I tell you what, let me share with you a couple of passages that clearly state what I mean and where I'm coming from. The first passage is in Romans chapter 8, which tells us, that we need to put to death our misdeeds and evil desires. Now, those are the words of Paul, the Apostle Paul, right? He's the one who said them. We need to put these things to death. Now, if that isn't something we needed to do as our part of the equation, why would have Paul said that they were? Now, the next passage that I have found is also from Paul, right? And this is in Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, where he says that we are to put to death whatever belongs to our earthly nature. We are told what some of those are in this passage, you know, both in what different actions are and what different desires are, what these things our earthly nature are. Now, exactly how are we to do all this? Well, in both uh, places, in both pieces, in both, in both passages of Scripture, Paul tells us what to do. In Romans, he says to live according to the Spirit and not according to our sinful nature. And in case that's just a bit too vague for you, because, you know, it doesn't get too specific on that one, Colossians, the passage in Colossians, helps clarify this a little bit by saying, that how we do this is to clothe ourselves in compassion, in kindness, in humility, in gentleness, and in patience, and to bear with each other and to forgive each other. And then he says, over all those things, put on love, which binds all the others together in unity. So once again, we are back to love. Love kills off earthly nature. See, love is needed, even as it is needed to grow our relationship with God. Now, now, as we saw in the episode, you know, love is what? Love originates in God. 
is extended to us so that we can be so we can become a part of his family and our love for him and for all others is a direct response to his love it's a direct enablement of his love right so yes it is god with his love who removes sin from our lives we can't do it on our own but we are told we do have an active part to play. We are to work out our salvation even as God is working within us. See, we have to kick our rear ends into gear and start living out what we have learned, which, from Colossians, is living from compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with each other, and forgiving each other. Simply put, it is loving God with our entire being and our neighbor as ourselves. Now, we're getting just a little long, and my coffee is running a little short. So, we'll stop here. Now, we'll pick this up next time, and next time, we're going to remember these passages but we're going to actually take a look at a couple of small and very simple things that we can do to give this some practicality in our own lives. Now, as always, yes, much more could be said on this topic. But, you know, time is a little short. So, with this in mind, knowing that more could have been said, please let me know what you think about all this. Do you agree with my thoughts? Do you disagree with them? And please, honor me with the reasons that you do or don't, for that is the only way wonderful conversations can begin. Conversations from which we both might grow in faith and even maybe start a friendship. Thank you for doing so. Well, until next time then, may you continue to grow in your relationship with the one true God. And may you take it easy, take it slow, and may coffee into your cup always flow.